In a fleeting moment, amidst the crowd, a man's gaze lingered a second too long on a woman, and just like that, she was utterly smitten. Brazenly, in full public view, she left a hickey on his neck. Unknown to them, this woman was the first in Japan to be infected with the zombie virus. In mere days, the virus spread nationwide. For years later, Tokyo has turned into a ghost town. Beneath the city lay the Japanese division of the Umbrella Corporation. Two soldiers stood guard outside, unaware that they were about to be ambushed by unknown assailants. Weskier, a top executive of Umbrella, sensed something amiss and immediately dispatched troops to guard the base's elevator. But when the elevator doors slid open, it was empty. Little did they know, the enemy had already infiltrated the base through the ventilation shafts. Enter Alice, having made her way from North America to Tokyo. Just as the soldiers sensed danger, they were met with a trio of darts, taking several of them down instantly. Drawing her twin blades, Alice plunged into the fray, slicing through them with the ferocity of the Grim Reaper, leaving a trail of severed limbs in her wake. Before many could even react, more than half had fallen. Finally, three soldiers responded, unleashing a barrage of bullets on Alice, but not a single one struck her. Alice swiftly took cover and, using a corpse as a shield, decimated them with a hail of bullets, leaving them riddled with holes. The last remaining soldier tried to put up a fight, brandishing two guns and firing wildly. Alice, with impressive agility, executed a wall run, spinning 360 degrees in midair to evade the barrage of bullets. As she landed, she hurled her katana. Having just taken out one squad, she turned around to find another ready for combat. Not wanting to waste time, Alice unleashed her ultimate move, a devastating attack. It's hard to believe that such an overpowering force was just one of Alice's clones. And there were enough of these clones to form an army. Soon, Alice's clones infiltrated every corner of the base. Weskier realized the dire situation and decided to abandon the base. He boarded a helicopter, activating the base's self-destruction sequence as he left. Within moments, the entire base was obliterated. Unbeknownst to Weskier, the real Alice had been on the aircraft all along. Quietly, she approached him, gun aimed at his head. However, Weskier had a trick up his sleeve too. He swiftly injected Alice with a newly developed serum. This serum neutralized the T-virus in Alice's body, stripping her of all her special abilities. Weakened, Alice was no match for Weskier and was quickly overpowered. But just as Weskier was about to deliver the killing blow, an alarm blared, signaling the impending crash of the aircraft. Turning to look, Weskier saw the unmanned plane rapidly descending towards a mountain. By some miracle, Alice survived. A few months later, she flew to Alaska, intending to rendezvous with Claire and others. Upon arriving, she found the place deserted, with countless planes grounded. It seemed the broadcasted sanctuary was a lie. Where had all the survivors gone? After some searching, Alice found Claire's aircraft and discovered the journal they had kept earlier. Just as she was about to record everything, a fleeting shadow caught her eye. Alice rushed towards it, but the figure vanished. Noticing the swaying aircraft door, she thought the person might be hiding inside. Instead, she was met with a flurry of crows. Just as Alice lowered her guard, she was suddenly ambushed from behind. Struggling to get free, she managed to kick her attacker away. Turning the assailant over, she was shocked to discover it was Claire. Attached to Claire's chest was a mechanical spider. By nightfall, Alice had removed the spider. Claire woke up, but she had lost her memory and didn't recognize Alice. It appeared that the mechanical spider had something to do with her amnesia. With no other choice, Alice piloted the plane in search of survivors, hoping Claire's memory would return. The two traveled from Alaska to Los Angeles. The city was desolate, not only were there no survivors, but even zombies were scarce. Just as Alice planned to move to the next city, she saw a massive horde of zombies surrounding a prison. On closer inspection, she noticed a few survivors on the prison roof. The sight of Alice's plane seemed like a lifeline to the survivors. However, upon circling the prison, Alice realized the grounds were swarming with zombies, making it impossible to access from below. Bravely, she decided to land on the roof. Understanding her intentions, the survivors cleared a makeshift runway. With a swift descent, Alice managed to land on the roof. Despite using power lines to slow the plane, 
The short runway resulted in the plane crashing into the prison's wall. As the plane teetered on the edge of a massive drop, basketball star Luther leapt into action. With help from the others, they pulled the plane back from the brink. After introductions, the survivors asked if Alice had come to rescue them. They too had heard the broadcast about the Alaskan sanctuary. Alice revealed the safe haven in Alaska was actually a moving ship that was gathering survivors along the coastline. They decided to head to the ship, but the prison was surrounded by zombies. Using the plane was risky since it could only carry two people at a time. And even if multiple trips were feasible, safe landings were not guaranteed. Luther later led Alice to a bathroom for a shower. But shortly after he left, Alice heard suspicious noises. Cautiously approaching with her revolver drawn, she found a bald man trying to peep on her. Enraged, she told him to leave. But the man's face suddenly turned to terror, not because of Alice, but due to a zombie behind her. Quick to react, Alice shot the zombie dead. The peeping man wasn't as fortunate, as another zombie grabbed him and dragged him into a tunnel. The group investigated and discovered zombies were burrowing into the prison. Their supposed safe haven was no longer secure. They had to find a way out, and fast. Desperate for a way out, Alice learned that there was a prisoner within the jail who knew an escape route. However, releasing him meant taking a risk. Despite everyone's apprehensions about the danger this inmate could pose, Alice made the decision to free him. To everyone's surprise, the first person he noticed upon his release was Claire. He was Claire's older brother, Chris. But due to her amnesia, Claire didn't recognize him. Their reunion was interrupted by the approach of a massive creature wielding a giant axe. Chris quickly formulated a plan. He revealed that behind a steel door, there was an armored vehicle capable of carrying everyone out of the prison, and a weapons armory full of various firearms and ammunition. Suddenly, a massive thud echoed throughout the prison. The executioner, a huge beast with its massive axe, was trying to break in. Realizing the urgency, the group split up. Alice and Chris headed to the flooded armory, Claire and Luther defended the main entrance to buy time, while the rest worked to retrieve the armored vehicle from behind the steel door. Upon reaching the armory's entrance, Alice and Chris were ambushed by a waterlogged zombie, which dragged another member of their team underwater. To their horror, they realized these zombies could not only burrow but also swim. After battling several of them, they finally reached the armory and were awestruck by the array of weapons. Alice's eyes gleamed with anticipation. Meanwhile, the steel door was successfully opened, but there was bad news. The engine for the armored vehicle was located externally, and repairs would take at least a week. One of the survivors, a curly-haired man, reacted to this news by shooting one of his companions. He decided to escape on Alice's plane. The prison's main gate couldn't withstand the executioner's relentless assault. With the gate destroyed, a horde of zombies, led by the executioner, poured in. Claire and Luther fled to the rooftop, only to find the curly-haired man already aboard the plane. As Alice joined them on the roof, the traitorous man shot at them and then flew away in the aircraft. With the plane out of reach, the survivors had to face the approaching horde of zombies on the rooftop. They fought back fiercely, firing their weapons while retreating towards the elevator shaft. However, with the elevator non-functional, Alice had to improvise. She led the group to the shaft and directed them to head down, using the standing water in the shaft as a buffer. After ensuring everyone was in, Alice threw down a bomb from the top, causing a massive explosion that cleared their path downwards. Alice, however, faced the oncoming swarm on the rooftop head-on. She quickly tied an electric cable around herself. As the zombies closed in, she threw down another explosive device and, using the cable, leaped off the tall building. The pursuing zombies, unable to stop in time, plummeted down after her. The explosive detonated in midair, taking out a significant number of the undead. Before hitting the ground, Alice detached herself from the cable, landing gracefully amidst the wreckage and immediately made her way through the remaining zombies. With Luther's assistance, she rejoined the group. Their only viable option was to follow the tunnel dug by the zombies, which led to the sewage system, and from there, to the open sea. Chris took the lead, closely followed by Luther. But the young Asian boy hesitated. Out of nowhere, the executioner's giant axe cleaved him in half. Alice, seeing the executioner, leapt forward, aiming a kick at his face. However, it barely fazed him. 
In a split second, Alice found herself evading powerful blows from the giant's axe. When she finally saw an opening to counterattack, the executioner's strike sent her crashing into a wall, knocking her unconscious. As the executioner prepared to deliver the final blow to Alice, Claire intervened. Her gunshots drew his attention. The executioner turned and lunged at Claire, his axe swinging dangerously. However, Claire, nimble and quick, dodged each blow. Spotting a discarded shotgun on the ground, Claire slid under the executioner's next swing, grabbed the gun, and fired upwards, hitting him point-blank. Just when Claire thought they were safe, the seemingly invincible executioner rose again, this time throwing his axe towards her. Alice, regaining consciousness just in time, pulled Claire away from the deadly trajectory. Without missing a beat, Alice aimed the shotgun and delivered a headshot, finally putting the monstrous executioner down for good. Rejoining the team, Alice and Claire navigated through the tunnel, eventually reaching the sewer system. But as they moved on, they heard sounds of struggle. Looking back, they saw Luther being overwhelmed by zombies. By the time they processed the situation, a cave-in had blocked the tunnel behind them, cutting off any chance of rescue. Resigned to their situation, the remaining trio, Alice, Chris, and Claire, continued their journey. They stumbled upon a small boat and decided to head toward a massive ship they spotted in the distance. Once they boarded the ship, they found it eerily deserted, except for a helicopter piloted by a curly-haired man approaching the ship. They navigated to the ship's control room, only to find it empty as well, even though the equipment was functioning properly. A computer screen displayed thousands of survivors. Where could they possibly be? While searching the ship, the trio discovered a massive steel door with the emblem of the Umbrella Corporation. A rush of memories flooded Claire, reminding her of their arrival in Alaska. Upon landing, they were ambushed by armed personnel on speedboats who forcibly abducted them using spider-like machines, leaving Claire as the sole escapee. Realizing this was another one of Umbrella Corporation's traps, they cautiously approached the door. As they did, it opened automatically. They ventured inside and found themselves in a brightly lit, large chamber. Claire located a control panel revealing that the survivors were being used as subjects for experimentation and were being held in chambers below them. Quickly, they opened all the chambers, reuniting with their previously abducted companions. However, Alice noticed a few chambers stained with blood. Following the trail, she found another chamber filled with Umbrella Corporation helicopters and a self-destruct system identical to the one in the Tokyo base. As she ventured further in, desiccated corpses appeared before her. An ascending monitor screen then revealed Albert Weskier. It turned out that after the plane crash, Weskier had used the T-Virus to resurrect himself. Suddenly, two zombified dogs appeared. Before Alice could retaliate, she was ambushed by the curly-haired man from the helicopter, now revealed as one of Weskier's allies. Alice's presence on the ship was not a surprise to Weskier. The potency of the T-Virus inside him required him to consume human blood to stave off mutations. Ordinary human blood was of no use to him. However, Alice, having perfectly fused with the T-Virus, became his primary target. By consuming her blood, he believed he could keep the virus in check within his body. Alice wasn't about to be taken without a fight. After deflecting Weskier's attack using nearby utensils and disarming the curly-haired man, she found herself cornered by the zombified dogs. Just in the nick of time, the Redfield siblings arrived, guns trained on Weskier. However, Weskier, enhanced by the T-Virus, was no easy opponent. His newfound abilities were unparalleled in speed and strength. Chris and Claire were swiftly defeated and locked away in one of the experimental chambers. On the other hand, Alice was locked in combat with the dogs. She managed to take out one with the shotgun she retrieved and cunningly used a shard of tempered glass to defeat the other. Just as she thought she had the upper hand, the curly-haired man sneaked up on her, stabbing her arm. Weskier saw this as his opportunity to feast on Alice. But, using the very dagger that was lodged in her arm, she managed to impale Weskier's head. Even that wasn't enough to take Weskier down for good. As he readied another attack on Alice, another survivor intervened, attacking the curly-haired man. Weskier, despite half his head being blown off, continued his onslaught. But with the combined efforts of Alice, the Redfield siblings, and the new survivor, they managed to subdue Weskier. On their way out, they locked the treacherous curly-haired man in with the seemingly incapacitated Weskier. 
However, the group soon heard screams from within the chamber. To their horror, Weskier was alive and had devoured the curly-haired man. He made his way to one of the helicopters, intending to escape, and once again triggered the ship's self-destruct system. But Alice was one step ahead this time. She had planted an explosive device on the helicopter. By the time Weskier realized, it was too late. Meanwhile, much to their relief, they found Luther, who they had believed to be dead, alive, and well. As they and the many survivors made their way to the ship's deck, they planned to take over the ship and broadcast a message to rescue more survivors. But their relief was short-lived as they looked to the horizon, only to see countless helicopters bearing the emblem of the Umbrella Corporation advancing towards them.